Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I've got a photo that honestly I edited several times and I, uh, over the years really. It's, it's an older photo, probably five or six years old, but I've edited it several different times and I, I gotta be honest, I was never really super happy with the way it turned out despite the fact that I think the scene is fairly beautiful, the color and all that was pretty nice as well. Let me just show you the photo. This is Nashville, Tennessee from the Shelby Street Bridge, I believe it's called, over the Cumberland River, uh, some of you may know, but anyway, it's a beautiful city. Uh, I used to really enjoy visiting, and it's a great view up there. But anyway, as you can see, nice sunset, uh, nice view, got a reflection, all that stuff. And what I've done so far is uh, I did a little bit of vertical correction kind of stuff with the Composition AI tool, and I took a couple of spots out, but that's it. And so what I'm talking about here is, that, of course, you know, I think the sky looks fantastic. I think the reflections look nice. I just love the view, the skyline. You kind of get drawn to the big, I think they call it the Batman building, that tall one on the left, and kind of flow that way, which is kind of toward the color. But I could never really get it right. It was always just kind of off. So I'm working in this photo to get it from being kind of off to being something that I really like. So I'm starting with light, and the first thing I'm doing is I'm just going to do a very small move with temperature and tint like a negative five and a plus five. Smart contrast is gonna go up a bit, like, you know, high 20s. I think the highlights are gonna come down a fair amount. They're a little bit bright in a couple of bits of the sky there. And I am gonna lift the shadows because obviously it's a rather dark. So something like that. And the only other thing I'm gonna do here is lift the blacks as well. And, you know, so we've made a little bit of an impact on the photo from that to that. A lot of work to do. And here's one of the key things that I did that I think helped quite a bit, and that is, in the past, I would go into some of my typical moves with maybe structure, you know, in the buildings or, uh, you know, color in the sky and work on those kind of things. But it's really, it's just too dark in the buildings. And so this is where I actually, I'll often use a local mask uh, later in my edits, but I went ahead and added a local mask, a basic one right away. And I went ahead and painted it into the buildings and then I made some adjustments. So let me paint that in and then I'll make these adjustments, show you what I did. Okay, so there's my mask, couple of minutes of kind of painting in, I've got that. And of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is lift the exposure. And I went pretty high, I went to about a 90, 90 something, but I felt like it was really just too dark, needed to come up. The other thing I did was add a bit of warmth to it, and I think that really helped as well. So I've got that at about a 50. And then of course I add some structure, and I'm not gonna overdo it, I'm gonna do like a you know 15 or something, actually maybe more like a 12. Okay, so having done that, now I'm gonna go back to my uh, typical tools and kind of get in there. And the first thing I wanna do here, actually, you know what? Here's the uh, thing I almost forgot, and that is I'm gonna copy this mask because um, I've basically isolated the buildings away from the sky and the water. And if you've been here before, you know I like to isolate sky and water and do a little bit of adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that negative. I'm gonna paint uh, excuse me, copy that mask in, or paste it, I should say, and then invert it so that I'm now going to have a mask that is going to be just in the sky and the water, as you can see there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to drag this negative, and I'm going to go pretty low, like in the mid-50s, something like that. And all I'm doing is just kind of smoothing out the sky and water, simply because I just like it, to be honest. So um, after that is... I went down to super contrast, and I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of saving color for last, and I don't always do that, so it's one of the things I did a little bit differently here. But super contrast, I went to, you know, kind of mid-40s, and then mid-tones, I went to kind of the low 30s, and, you know, roughly about the same with shadows. Then I come in here and I play with a balance. I ended up at about a 17 or so here on the highlights, about a 13 on mid-tones and like a 10 or 11 on shadows. So let me show you the difference in super contrast. There it is before, and there it is after. I don't know if, how well you can tell in the video, but it's actually dark in the sky, which actually helped me some with the highlights because the sky is brighter. So again, before the super contrast tool and after, and then I think that actually really helps with the color as well. So keep in mind when you're adjusting contrast, it does impact color. And speaking of color, I'm now getting into Color Harmony, which just came in clutch here for me. Um, I did about a 10 on Brilliance and about a negative 25 on Warmth. So I basically went a little cooler here. Split Color Warmth, I went to about a 14 or so here on the Warmth and about a 10 on Cool. And then I started on the Shadows in Color Balance and I did a very small amount here on the Blues. I went to about a 2 
and then I went into highlights, and this is something that really helped me. I went about a negative 15 or 16, 17, something like that on the magentas, and about a negative 7 on the blues. And so it just created a bit of a nice, warm, kind of sunset look with a, obviously a magenta cast, but I think that really helped with the color because if I turn that off, there it is before any of these color harmony adjustments, and there it is after. So much more vibrant, much more colorful, which is, of course, what color harmony will do for you. Now I'm up here to the landscape tool, and that's another thing I did a little bit differently here is I did these quite a bit out of order. Um, you know, I kind of bounced around a little bit, whereas in the past I would just kind of go in and follow the, the different things that I like to do. I just kind of messed around here a little bit different order, and I think it really helped me get to the end result that I ended up liking. So here, a slight bit of golden hour and a slight bit of foliage enhancer. So if I turn that off, there it is before and after. Not a massive difference, but the foliage enhancer really popped those trees on the left and some of that green as well, and I kind of like it. It's kind of bright, kind of saturated, but it kind of works for me here. And of course, I do love my mystical tool, so I'm coming over here, and I'm gonna do about a 35 or so on the amount, and I'm actually gonna lift the shadows a little bit because I don't wanna lose some of the visibility into this skyline itself, um, and adding mystical does create some contrast and shadow, which can impact that uh, you know, visibility into different parts of the photo, but it does a nice, nice kind of soft contrast overall. Uh, kind of look. So there it is before, mystical, and there it is after. And I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually going to go back to my local adjustment. I actually think I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit more just to get it a little bit brighter. I think something about like that looks pretty good. Now, if I turn this off, you'll see how much of a difference this local mask had on the photo. That's what the buildings would have looked like with my other moves, way too shadowy and things like that. And obviously that's an easy fix, but because I wanted to brighten them, warm them up, also add structure to me, it just makes perfect sense to use a basic local mask for that because you can do all that with one masking job on basically one filter or one tool with all these different sliders. So those local masks come in really handy, but there it is, dark and you know basically invisible, and then turn back on much brighter, much more uh, vibrant and visible. And in fact, I might pull that exposure back a little bit. Now, the only other thing is it could be, and I'm just saying, um, could be that there's too much color for you, which is an easy fix. And notice I made massive color differences in this photo. There it is before, and there it is now, and I didn't even use the color tool. So if for some reason, if you're unlike me, for example, and saturation and vibrance and this one is just way too high, you can just pull it down really easily, right? You can just come over here, pull those back a little bit, make them uh, maybe a little bit less intense, you know, season to taste, that sort of thing. But what I was able to do is control the light and control the color very well with a few key things. And I think what made a difference for me here was the local mask and doing these things kind of out of order, basically saving color for last, which was uh, a nice use of super contrast that really helped get me where I wanted to go. Let me show you that without super contrast. I think overall it looks a bit flatter. And then when I add super contrast back, you can see the intensity of the color has really come up. So one more time, without super contrast and with super contrast. And of course, the other major difference was because of color harmony that really helped me pop those colors and control the overall look of the photo. So there it is without color harmony, kind of flat, honestly kind of green, which is why I used the magenta in the highlights because there's a lot of highlights there. But before that was very flat and kind of lifeless, even though honestly, it was a beautiful sunset, but now much more vibrant, much more, I think, attractive and beautiful to me. Um, and that's even with a slight reduction in saturation and vibrance, which I did over here. If I turn that back off, you have a little bit more of a bump to it, but you know, again, season to taste. My point here was I used a local adjustment or local mask prior to doing other things to really control that specific part of the photo, which was the skyline itself. I used super contrast to help me kind of pop the colors and manage the light better. And of course, color harmony, which came in um, super helpful to get the colors looking just the way I wanted to get them to look. And that was one of the challenges I've had in the past with this photo, just not able to get the colors right because there's so many different colors. If you look at it, there's like yellows and oranges, some red, some green, there's blue, there's a little bit of pink and magenta. There was just a lot going on, but I think we were able to take a photo that was, you know, arguably pretty, you know, let's, let's, um, pretty, uh, but needed some work, just, just wasn't there. And now I think it looks a lot a lot more attractive, at least in my eye. Okay, I had to have a quick timeout. I was wrapping up that video. I had it all ready to go, and I've decided a few days later, I missed something. And that's the beauty of both filming videos and editing photos. You can go back and adjust them later. So 
I'm in a different shirt, it's a different day, all that kind of stuff. But what I realized I missed was um, I lightened all the buildings, but I didn't do anything to the reflection. And I think that's a miss on my part. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and add a mask into the reflection and brighten it just a little bit because I think the difference between the brightness level of the city and the reflection is just a little too much for my taste. Now, I don't think they need to be equal. Um, I do think the reflection would be a little bit darker, but regardless, I wanna fix it. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so something about like that ought to cover it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that mask. And as I said, I just wanna brighten that exposure a little bit. So I'm gonna lift that just a little bit, not a ton. I think you don't wanna go too far because then you, you know, obviously it'll get sort of out of sorts looking. And the other thing I think of about reflections is the object being reflected. The object itself is gonna be brighter than the reflection. In other words, the reflection probably should be a little bit darker. So I've lightened that a little bit. Let me show you the before and after. There it is before, you can see a little bit darker. And it was, just, like I said, it was just a little bit too dark for my taste, but I didn't realize that until after I'd finished the video and then rewatched it. So now I turn this back on and you can see it's a little bit brighter. Now I actually might pull that back a little bit. I don't wanna overdo it, but mostly I just wanted to come back and insert this, uh, this last piece into the video and let you know that, hey, I thought about that. I just thought about it later. That will actually wrap up this video. Video. I think I did a lot of different things here that really helped me make the image kind of go from that to that, had a massive impact on color and that sort of thing. And I'm quite pleased with the final result and I think it looks a little bit better now that I've lightened that reflection. So pay attention to the small details, my friends. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.